The laws of physics are unkind to the heart. Love is not reactive. It is too noble. And the warmth of the human spirit means nothing to the heat death of the universe. And it is what Captain Ben Barton learns in tonight's episode of the Midnight Digest. The Cold Equations. Nah, nah, I can't watch that junk anymore. It got way too violent. It was funny, but then they brought in the little kids and stuff. I can't get into that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no, I miss basketball too, man. You know, they had to stop doing it on the cruisers. Too many guys were tricking the sensors and manipulating the graphs. Started to, you know, cause some fights to break out. Oh yeah, man. If you'd have told me about the free pack of the noodles, I'd have joined up right out of the Navy for that alone. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you miss these runs. Who wouldn't? Packet noodles and claustrophobia. <laughs> nah. Nah, I enjoy your desk job, really. I haven't been out of the Navy long enough to enjoy that. Packet noodles are still better than rations. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's get the initial dispatch report out of the way. Uh, let me put you on speaker so I can do that, all right? All right, Captain Barton, you may begin. Emergency data ship EDS action report 1800 hours mission 34 Gamma India India. Successful dispatch from parent ship Stardust. Destination, second expedition, colony planet Woden. Cargo inventory, one medipack of Kala Midge Fever vaccine containing enough serum for 18 patients. Normal space appears clear on all visuals. Cargo and ship survived dispatch intact. Fuel usage is at optimal and... Uh, hold on a sec. Fuel usage is not optimal. We're running just below flush on the gauge. Sir, I've got a suboptimal fuel readout. It's nothing major, but it's reading me at neg one instead of a nice even zero. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that implies a possible fuel leak. Uh, fuel leak on a neg one? Not likely, Burton. All right, all right, no worries then. Guess it was just a readout issue. Should even out in the wash. Didn't say that, Burton. So what then? It's not like I can pull over and check under the hood in this thing, Commander. Slide fuel over, Burton. What are you saying? I made a mistake getting that extra plate of noodles last night, Delart. I can still outrun your fat ass any day of the week. No, I'm saying you have a stowaway of some kind. What? Weight differential that small means that you've got an extra person on board. Either that or someone packed extra cargo in your storage closet. Could be contraband. I'm able to get a visual on your external display, and it's not anything on the outside, which means whatever it is, it's inside your ship. And with the size of those EDS ships... It's not sitting on your lap, it's in storage. I guess there's a chance it could be a whole reach full of those grav bats, but it's not likely. What's the procedure then, Commander? Jettison it. I mean if it's not cargo. So do I. Anyone in there? <clears throat> Hello? This is... This is Captain Ben Barton. This ship is EDS property and unauthorized boarding is punishable with legal action up to and including immediate termination if your actions are determined to be counter to the ship, mission, and personnel safety. Come out now with your hands above your head. I said OUT! I give up, okay? It's a mess in there. Now what? I guess you have to call the authorities or something? What are you doing here? Mm, hitching a ride? Stowing away. You're a stowaway. No, I... Well, stowing away, I guess. I was just trying to hitch a ride. Not do anything illegal. 
Stowaways are like drifters and criminals and stuff. This is criminal. You're stealing from the transport services. You want to get off a ship you book passage like everyone else. Do you even have any idea where you're going? I doubt you do. Woden. The colony. Group two, I think. You don't exactly look dressed and ready for survey work. Oh, don't tell me you're someone's girlfriend on- No, oh, no, I, I wanted to see my brother, Jerry Cross, of Survey Group 2. Yeah. Do you know him? No. Oh, well, he's there. Anyway, I felt pretty clever, actually. There aren't any public transports to Woden yet, so... This shipment is going to Group 1. That is just under 8,000 miles across the planet. The amount of resources necessary to transport you there is totally out of the question for those guys on the surface. It's not comfortable down there. They're on a tight budget. Do you get that? Do you understand budget? Look, I'm sorry if I upset you. This isn't going to be your fault, is it? Because if you forgot to check before takeoff and you were supposed to, I don't think that's all on me. Full name. Marilyn Cross. Look, what kind of trouble am I going to be in? I have a ton of credit saved up. I plan to pay the fine and whatever else they need from me. Original destination when you boarded the Stardust. Mimir. I just graduated language studies. I have a job waiting for me there. Doesn't start for a few months. Are we going faster? Yes. Why? I can't exactly go anywhere. You don't have to hurry. So we don't... (sighs) To save fuel. Okay. Anyway, I graduated early, so I have some time before the job starts. I thought I'd go see Jerry. Surprise him. I mean, I'm not a bum. I have basic first aid and some nursing courses I took in school. And I can cook and clean and stuff. And I can just catch a ride back on another transport. And yeah, pay my fine so everything's even Steven. That's quite a plan. Thanks. It was more of an impulse than anything. The plan itself was sort of made up while I was waiting in the supply closet. So, what sort of fine am I looking at? Or penalty? Oh god, I I don't have to go to jail, do I? I, uh, I don't think so. EDS 3-4 Gamma India India, this is Barton Stardust. Come in, Delhart. Barton, we're keeping an eye on you. Still reading low, but that should even out if you jettison that extra cargo. Negative. We've indeed got a stowaway. Damn. Okay, did you get his ID disc before you airlocked him out? Not exactly. Are they going to send someone out to get me? I hear someone, Barton. That would be our stowaway. She was headed to Woden to see her big brother. Any stowaway discovered in an EDS vehicle is to be jettisoned immediately. You know that. What? I I think this is an extenuating circumstance. I fail to see how, Barton. I don't care how pretty her eyes are, this isn't about the nobility of her cough. She's a young girl and she can hear you. God, you can't be serious. I don't care if she's carrying the second coming of Christ, Martin. This isn't something I can change. Fuel is finite. You know that. You passed math. Grow a spine, Delhart. This is a girl's life we're talking about here. Captain Martin. I can't turn this whole cruiser around for a girl who made a bad decision. There are people on board here on life support whose families paid out a bundle trying to get to Mimi. And then there's your cargo. Think about it. Do the math. You're going to have to go through with it. I'm sorry. Go through with it? What does he mean? Yes, sir. So what now? Where are you going to take me? There isn't anything I can do. You're going to kill me. The vacuum of space is going to kill you. I just have to put you out there. Don't dodge around it. You're going to make me die. I'm going to die because of you. Because of you and your procedure to bring some surveyor's car parts? Please call my brother. I'm sure he'd rather wait for supplies than see his sister dead. I'm sorry. It's a matter of the law. Whose law? I think I have a right to know whose law I'm about to die for. Physics! Nature! Gravity! This is out of my hands, or anyone. It's medication, Marilyn. We're carrying medication for the surveyors. The Kalamage fever down there is tearing these guys apart. Without this vaccine, Team 1 won't last another week. These little ships are hardly given enough fuel to get to their destination and back. If... If M is the amount of fuel needed to get us to N, N being Woden, you're... You're X. You're the variable that no one accounted for. 
Your extra weight will overburn our fuel until we don't have enough to land safely and we'll... We'll crash. I'm not that heavy. It's not about that, honey. Say it was. Maybe we could jettison some other stuff on board to make up for me. Everything in here that's not you, me, or that vaccine is nailed down and necessary. I've slowed us down a bit. According to the new readouts, I have to pick up speed again in ten minutes or... Or I'll burn out anyway. That means by then you need to be gone. How did this happen to me? An hour ago I had a fun idea, and, and now I'm condemned to death? There's nothing I can do. If you're here, the ship can't get to Woden. Those men will die. Would Jerry die? Maybe. I don't know. He's on Woden. Jerry's why I did this whole full thing. This isn't fair. Space isn't like Earth, sweetheart. It's a frontier out here. All this distance, and... Sometimes we don't even have room for one another. That's... That's kind of insightful. Are you a writer? No. No. They don't even get free noodles. You wouldn't kill me if you didn't have to, would you? You're not a madman. Or even just an asshole. Sweetheart, I... I don't want to live with this any more than you want to die for it. Can you take him a letter? I, uh... I think I can see that it gets to him. Can I read it? To see if it sounds okay? Sure. Jerry. I'm sorry. I see now how selfish I was. The terrible thing about dying like this is not that I'll be gone, but that I'll never see you again. I didn't really mean to ever hurt you by being stupid with this, and I want you to remember that I love you far more than I ever let you know. That seems like a waste. I... Jerry, do you remember when I was only six years old and my kitten got run down in the street? You held me and wiped away my tears and told me not to cry, but she was gone for just a little while to get herself a new fur coat. And she would be on the foot of my bed the very next morning. When I woke up the next morning, there she was on the foot of my bed, in a brand new white fur coat, just like you had said. It wasn't until a long time later that Mom said you had got the pet shop owner out of bed at four in the morning, and, and when the man got mad about it, told him he was either going to go down and sell him the white kitten right then and there, or he would break his neck. If I've ever done anything like that for you, please remember me that way. Not ruptured, all ugly from dying in space. I'll try to come to you. Maybe I'll come to you in your dreams, with my hair in braids, or maybe I'll be the touch of a breeze in the air. Or maybe I'll be one of those gold-winged larks you told me about singing my silly head off to you. Even if you can't see me, I might be there beside you. Think of me like that, Jerry. Always like that and not the other way. I'm ready now. I'm sorry, I... I tried to reach out to the survey camp on Woden to see if Jerry was around to speak to you. He's... He's not, and I, and I can't have you stay here any longer. That's awfully nice of you, Mr. Barton. You've been as nice as I could have hoped. Through there? That's... that's the one, Marilyn. When I go through here, I'm ready, okay? Don't wait for me to give a signal. Okay. Goodbye, Marilyn. And there's really nothing else you can do? No, that's okay. I know you would have. I'm ready.
This has been the Midnight Digest, Episode 2, The Cold Equations. Based upon a short story by Tom Godwin. Adapted for audio by Teeny Howard. Starring Blake Howard as Captain Ben Barton. Holly Cole as Marilyn Cross. And Brett J. Young as Commander Delhart. <laughs>